Hello everyone, Foxy Games here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Full Story Playthrough. Alpha, what are you doing climbing up on that box? So, in the last episode, we went to the burn. We did not find Alpha, no, but we found the wreck of the airship. And, um, well, seeing as there could be Imperial reprisals from all the shit going on, we have an energy source to seek for, a barrier we're putting together. And that's why we're out here in the Azim Steppe. So let's go and find Yashtola and see where we're gonna head from there. It is a fine feeling to be back. Were it not for our mission, I would like nothing more than to lie on the grass and watch the f and watch the clouds float by. With Sirena, I imagine. <laughs> Look, I'm never gonna stop shipping those two. You can't stop me. So this is the Azim Steppe. The tales do not do it justice. If you think the view is impressive here, wait until we reach higher ground. Actually, seeing as it's your first visit, permit me to show you my favorite spot. This vista, the endless fields, the boundless skies, tis a sight to make a man forget his cares. But not his purpose, I trust. Might this be a fitting moment to tell us what we are doing here? Of course. During my time with the Mole, I learned some few myths of this land. One goes thus. In the distant past, when all seemed doomed, a wayfaring soul came unto the steppe. Venturing into the northern crag, he received of Nama a sliver of her essence, a shard of the shining moon, and with it clove the tainted land from the earth. The end thus averted, to these fields did the wayfaring soul return, and venturing once more into the northern crag, he buried the shard and made unto the heavens an offering of blood. A tainted land cloven from the earth and an offering of blood to the heavens, as is La and Dalamud. That was my thinking, yes. And you believe that yonder mountains hide an artifact possessed of sufficient power to raise Azizla up to the heavens. I suppose that might suffice. Worth a closer look, would you say? I would. I love how just completely disinterested Yashtola is in just loafing about. An intriguing myth, though I wonder how Nama came to be woven into it. An elegant hand, perhaps? Perhaps. Or other things, which I can't talk about because it's incredibly spoilery for Shadowbringers. From here, we shall travel to Molilo. That we may ask Sirena about the particulars of the myth and raise the matter of an alliance with the rulers of the steppe. Let's fly into this dust storm that's rising up on the wind. Ah, it's been a hot minute since we've been to Molilo. I do wonder how Sirena's doing. So that is Sirena. Lee's told me something of the woman, but I did not think we would ever have the occasion to meet. Tell me, do you notice anything different about the mole? How they carry themselves? That, my friend, is pride. I do believe their victory in the Nada meant more to them than I realized. I sure hope they've gotten stronger then. Strange. Amidst the radiance of your beings, I sense a shadow. I pray it is but my imagination. Ooh. Now that's interesting.
Perhaps it's just worry. Hien, Foxy, I'm glad of your visit and the opportunity to welcome a new friend. How may we serve you? There is a matter I would discuss with the Mole. It concerns not only the people of the Steppe, but of every land in the Far East. A shard of the Shining Moon left behind by a wayfaring soul. And you need this to protect our lands? I do. My friends and I wish to find the shard and ascertain the extent of its power. Will you tell me more of the place where it lies buried, this northern crag? If that is your wish. In the mountains to the north, there is a cavern called the House of the Crooked Coin. Inside this cavern are pillars of stone that legend holds to be the source of Nama's power. There, I believe, you will find what you seek. Ah, yes, I know the place. Tis a brisk walk from here. And what are your thoughts on an alliance? Should the Empire return, our lands will be engulfed in a storm of conflict whether we will it or no. If we do not stand together, we will fall apart. This I believe with all my heart. However... However... Among the tribes of the Steppe, there are those who revere Nama above all else. To them, the pillars are sacred and not to be disturbed. Should you proceed as you propose, such tribes are like to spurn an alliance, prompting others to follow their example. That is my concern. But it is by no means certain that the pillars will provide the power you seek. Ere you risk the ire of the followers of Nama, might you not first visit the House of the Crooked Coin? If all is as you hope, we may then consider how best to earn their blessing. I thank you for your counsel. We will do as you suggest. I have no desire to give offense to those with whom I would join hands. Thank you for understanding. Though the Mole may reign over the steppe today, this decision will shape the days to come, and we would not force others into war against their will. Nor we. A hundredfold stronger are they who choose to fight of their own accord. Which is why we're always beating the hell out of the Empire. In a place such as the Steppe, where myriad tribes exist side by side, it is important to respect each other's ways, and it would be wise indeed to respect the beliefs of those who would gladly render up body and soul to the Dusk Mother. Hmm. Oh, same thing. That is very mysterious, talking about a shadow in our midst. Are we being watched, I wonder? Or maybe it's just our worry. Sirena is quite right. Before we seek permission to use the pillars, we should determine if they're suitable for our purposes. It seems the time has come to put my skills to use. Pray lead the way to the House of the Crooked Coin. Oh god, this guy's name is Shadow the Edgehog. <laughs> he even <laughs> looks like Shadow. Oh no, why? Why do you people do these things? Oh. Oh well. It can't be unseen. Thanks for that. Thank you for that, Shadow the Edgehog. You absolute cringe master. Uh, th this thing was just here the entire time. Wow. I mean, this sticks out like a sore thumb. It, it, it goes so deep into the mountain. Well, it certainly looks powerful, but powerful enough. That you'll have to ask the expert. Ah. Yeah, Yashtola, what do you think of it? Such an abundance of ether. 
Are we in luck? We are. This is an Alagan artifact, most likely built to regulate the flow of ether. I strongly suspect the ancients used it to stem the flow from here to the burn. That would explain how they were able to untether what became Aziz La from its surroundings. But were we to throw open the floodgates, the resultant deluge would surely be sufficient to raise our wall. And in restoring the flow, we may also restore life to the wasteland. Hmm. What is it? While the device itself harbors a surfeit of ether, the opposite is true of the surrounding area. An effect of regulation, perhaps. A similar phenomenon seemed to be occurring in Doma. Whatever the explanation, the answer will not reveal itself here. We have seen what we needed to see. Let us return to Mol Illo. Well, that's fascinating. The Aether in Doma is strange to us. Well, to our resident etherologists, anyway. That such an abundant source of energy should lie undisturbed for millennia, tis a miracle made possible by the steppe's long history of isolation. Well, it looks like I was right about the pillars. Now all we need is permission to use them. You found that which, we, which you seek, then. Great indeed is the Dusk Mother's power. If naught else will suffice to protect our lands, the blessings of the other tribes must now be sought. Of course, but to which tribe should we appeal? There are many who worship Nama, but none are so fervent to their, in their faith as the Dothal. Their consent shall be key. The Dothal least spoke of them, a warlike tribe possessed of unique customs and beliefs. I sense their cooperation will not be easily won. Nay, but it will be well worth the effort. The Dothal feel nothing, fear nothing, death least of all, and our alliance will be greatly strengthened by their presence. Let us go to Dothalha and treat with, the, with their Hatun Sadu. Siren is so fucking cute. Look at that cheer. Ugh. Alright. Alright. Enough. Enough. Um, enough of that. Despite her fondness for battle, Sadu is an astute leader. If we plead our case in earnest, I'm certain she can be persuaded. Great faith gives rise to great strength, for better or for worse. Whatever it is the Dothar holds sacred, we would do well to accord it, in, accord it all respect. What? What is that? Is that a... Where do I get a cute witchy broom mount? I'm gonna have to look that up. Also, last time we looked at you, you were pregnant, right? I wonder who f whose spirit will find its way into my child's body. I eagerly await the day when the Hatun is at last able to gaze into my baby's eyes. Yep, she is indeed pregnant. I remembered. You again? Other matters demanded our time, Han. Unless it is battle you seek. Alas, not. Quite the opposite, in fact. Talking, always talking. You say the pillars hold great power? Of course they do. They are the source of Nama's strength. To the Dothal, no place is more sacred, and will make ash of any who would defile it. Though I see this is not your wish. 
You see the wisdom of our proposition, then. You will join hands with us? I said nothing of joining hands. You wish to wield Nama's power to defend these lands, and this I will allow. But as for leaving the step to fight the men in iron, I would have something in return. Namely... Namely, battle with you, Han. The Nada men did ere it began. I would face you again, alone, without distractions. Defeat me. Prove yourself the stronger, and you shall have the Dotharl as your allies. Surely these are agreeable terms. Well, this is a not wholly unexpected turn of events, though I had assumed I would be the one required to fight. Alas, the Hatoon has made her choice. Shall we dance? Ha! It shall be a battle the step shall not soon forget. Oh, already my soul burns brighter! Prepare yourself, Han, and await me outside the Ha. I will gather my witnesses and join you anon. I hope I'm pronouncing those words right. Because they, they very clearly call me Han, not Khan. So I'm going to guess the K is silent in most of these words? Why are you still here? Go. Wait for me outside the Ha. I will join you soon enough. Man, this far out? Try as I might, I fail to see the logic in this arrangement. I can but conclude there is none. You're not wrong. When I was little, I would stride up to Gosetsu, wooden sword in hand, and challenge him. To his great credit, he never held back, and I had many a bump and bruise to show for it. Ah. Huh. I wonder how Gosetsu is. I wonder where he went. Like, where did he go first? shall serve as well as any. I shall enjoy this, Han. Is this truly necessary? Have you no peaceable way of making decisions? Speak not of peace. You stand before proud warriors of the Dothal. In the heat of battle do our souls burn brightest. We lay low the strong that we may rise higher. That is our way. The way of might! There is no other! Oh, they did not want for conviction. <laughs> Indeed. It's what makes them such dangerous enemies. And such useful allies. Enough talk! It is time to fight! All right, Sadu. Let's make it a good show for your friends. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> I was using the wrong ability. I did not mean to hallowed ground there. Is this really it? You are strong indeed, a worthy champion of the step. But you are mistaken if you think I will fall so easily. Oh, up again. In death do our soul sing. Oh, hello. Do 
Ah, fighting you is pure bliss. Such sweet pleasure I will not suffer to end so soon. this thing. Broke your stupid toys. Well, do not tell me that is all you have. Damn, she does not want to go down. My soul demands more, Han. Give me more! <laughs> grow heavy, my eyes dim, but so long as my lifeblood flows, I will fight on! How it burns. Come, let us begin anew! Meteor? Oh dear. Uh, I think I have to kill her before that meteor lands. Well, I'm gonna eat that. Yes! Yes! Not since the Nardom has my soul burned so! Come! We have only just begun! Enough! You were not granted leave to set the step ablaze. Well, well, the sun has come out to play. Be gone, Moonstruck Oranir! I am busy! Fool of Adothal! Have you forgotten the face of your master already? The sun will never set! From his seat on high, he reigns over all, now and forever. <laughs> she could not care less about these people's ways. Yet what should he ways. find here but a battle to determine the fate of the steppe? A battle waged without his blessing. This will not stand. You, Doman! You who come to petition the warriors of this land, forget that all Nama's children are wards of the Oranir. As first among my brothers, your petition is mine alone to judge. <sighs> These words are as wind from a horse's backside. Plentiful, but your act sings more sweetly. Let her speak for you. Insolent child, you will learn your place! Forgive me, Brother Magni, but we have an arrangement with the Dothal. 
We will not abide any interruptions. <laughs> so be it. The sun will pass judgment on all. Didacool, join me. alone. Beg not for mercy, for you will have none. Bear witness to the power and the glory of Azim! Constantly at each other's throats like rabid dogs, gods. I'm turning into her. <laughs> Mataya. <clears throat> I am not the patience for this. But if we must fight, let us at least be brief. Come. And in this battle... Wait for it. We shall fight as Yastola. We have Stone, Arrow 2, Cure 2, and Ether Wall. Or Ether Well. Let's introduce them. Have an arrow. Focus on Magni, leave Didacool to me. Kneel or die. You Bow too must learn your place. Me. Ah, we've seen this mechanic before. Um he in. Oh dear. Well, he didn't take that much damage. God damn it. Stop it. Stop it. You have left yourself open, Doman. Oh. Okay. He ends better. I ate that. Bow down before me. Okay. I'm gonna save my MP to kill this thing. Though now I can recharge my MP, so I'm good. Well, he and just beat Didacool. Kneel or die. Bow down before me. Oh 
Those axes will not break. You have nowhere to hide. Very well then. Yashola, to me. Oh, Hien. Have some healing. Hmm, predictable. What? Every step you will take, every move you will make, the sun sees all. Now fall! Oh dear. Yeah, they give us plenty of time. Yeah. Time to finish this. Ifa, to me. Have at you. Ugh, what strength! What grace is this? That's the strength and grace of a cat mom. I see we've hashed out our battle. Bliss in defeat. I love Sadu. It was a battle to burn soul and flesh to ash. We Dothal will lend you our strength as promised. Nama's power is yours to wield. What does the sun say to that? <laughs> The sun is not driven by base motives such as yours. But I, they have been judged and found worthy. It is the way of the Oranir to accord recognition and respect to the strong. You have made sufficient proof of your strength. The sun shall answer your call. You have our thanks. We are glad to call you allies. You? By what are you called? Ishtola, why? Are you... Are you my Nama? I beg your pardon? In battle, you shone with all the majesty of the full moon's light. Your healing touch, the embodiment of the Dusk Mother's love. Long had I wondered if my Nama might not be a woman of the steppe. Beholding you, I am all but certain. Now, look into my eyes. Could it be? Could you be? I am. Not interested, little son. Try again when you've become a man. Little? Oh. Oh. Crave you salve to soothe the ache. 
fire to sear the wound in your heart. We have wasted enough time here. Siren awaits for word of our success. Oh, Yastola, I dare say you just started a war. I I just I could not wait. I that is one of my most my favorite scenes in this entire game. Yestola, you cannot just flat out murder a man with your words like that. Offended? Not in the least. I am no stranger to clumsy propositions, and that, believe it or not, was far from the worst I have heard. That is not surprising in any respect. I mean, not for nothing, but Yestola is a adorable and she's she's wise and she's gentle who wouldn't want to you know but no no Magni she is not your Nama Magni's unannounced appearance had me worried for a moment but it was not his day to shine still I cannot fault the man's bravery what are you wearing y you know I I don't hate that why are your eyes so bright? Oh, you're wearing glasses. That's what that I was... Hmm. I don't hate that. That actually looks pretty nice. You had not only to contend with Sadu, but Magni too? Such a fierce battle that must have been. Yet here you stand, triumphant. Having passed such a test, they could not well deny you their allegiance. The Mo will make no such demands. Weak though we are, we will gladly stand with you. The steppe is our home, and we will defend it with all our being. You have my heartfelt thanks. Of all the tribes in the steppe, there is none I would rather have at my side. God's willing, many more will rally to our cause. I shall send you word when we have answers from the other tribes. I cannot thank you enough, Sirena. None of this would have been possible without you. Though the Mole have no love for war, we love our home fiercely. Should the steppe be threatened, we will rise up to, pr to protect it, as will full many other tribes, I believe. Anything new to say, Tamalun? On the matter of Nama's power and the Alliance, the gods have remained silent. That is their way of telling us to choose with our hearts. Of course. And so our Alliance begins to take shape. Now, if we can just get that ether flowing again, it will have been a successful trip. Indeed. What is this? Endure? Oh dear. We, will ha we have the requisite con consent. It is time to put Nama's power to use. If the ether flows as planned, all that remains is to have the Ironworks engineers do their work at the ruins. Come, let us return to the House of the Crooked Coin. Well, that went rather better than I figured. It didn't go the way I figured, but it went better. I would not have the first idea how to wake it into a, into, yeah, to awaken such a contraption, let alone control it. But then I'm not an Archon of Charlian. I shall begin at once. You may wish to step back. Oh. Well, okay. <laughs> it does look particularly elegant.
Did it work? It did. Ether may flow freely to the burn once more. Well, all right then. Maybe it won't be a desert in a few years. To manipulate ether in such vast quantities is draining, to say the least. I shall take it slowly for a while. Say you've earned your rest. I do not pretend to understand what you did, Yashola, but you did it. Thanks to you and Foxy, of course, we have taken a momentous step towards securing our defenses. Now, as much as I believe a rest is in order, we should probably make haste back to the Enclave. Agreed. The others may already have returned from their missions, and I would know how things stand. As would I. Without further ado, then. Indeed. Let's get to it. Taking the actual etherite instead of forgetting about it like I had... <laughs> Ugh, jeez. Ah, everybody's here. Ali say. Here's Hakuro. My lord informs me you were instrumental to the success of, the, of his mission to the Azim Steppe. Though we hope to make many more allies, we could wish for no better than you and your fellow Scions. Each of the factions lent an ear to our, uh, to our petition. As anticipated, however, many were unwilling to do any more than that. Hmm. Everyone has returned. Excellent. Time to take stock. How you feeling, Cat Mom? To it seem we are the last to arrive. Judging by your triumphant expressions, I take it all went well on the Azim Steppe. Indeed, we have secured a suitable source of energy for the barrier. Good. Tataro and I have commissioned Garland Ironworks to ensure that the field generators function as they should. A team of engineers stand ready to set out for the burn at a moment's notice. You did only say the word. I thank you for engaging their services on our behalf. The minutia of the arrangement you may leave to me. Which just leaves a small matter of our alliance. So, Yugiri and Hakuro, how fared you with our neighbors? My lord... All of the factions we approached are in agreement that the Empire poses a threat, and many responded positively to talks of an alliance. From Hingashi and Suino Sato, however, we received outright rejections. The former will not break its treaty with the Empire, and the latter will not involve itself in conflict. Just as we expected, then. Well, there is not to be done about it. We must focus on the rest. To each of the nations that we were um, uh, that were amenable to, a to an alliance, I will personally send a missive. And once I have attended to that, I believe we will have done everything we can to fortify Doma's defenses, for the time being at least. All of which means I may leave for the meeting in Alamigo with a lighter heart. Yugiri, Hakuro, if you'd be so kind as to hold the fort in my absence. My friends, we could not have achieved so much in so little time without your help. For that, I give you my heartfelt thanks. Till the meeting, then. I took the liberty of asking Thancred to attend as well. He should have arrived in the Alamegan Quarter by now. Then let us not keep him waiting, shall we? As I mentioned, I have missives to write and some few other matters to attend ere to ere I depart. See you on, my friend. I, know full well, I knew full well how Hingashi and Suino Sato would respond, yet it did not to lessen the disappointment when they finally stopped equivocating. Well, there's nothing to be done about them. Are you perchance familiar with Nagsha? It is the region to the south and west of, Yang, uh, of Yangsha, and home to several small nations. Such peoples well understand the value of an alliance, and thus did many of them receive our proposal most favorably. Well, that's good news, at least. Uh, why are we running? We can just teleport. Straight there! Aw, yeah, etherite.
It occurs to me this will be the first time I meet the leaders of the Alliance in an official capacity. More stiff greetings, pleasantries, formalities. Does that sound about right? Yeah. Let us hope that the coming meeting pa uh, passes more peacefully than the last such gathering in Alamigo. Yeah. Ishtola has told me all, and I duly told Urianje and Kryl. Kryl in particular was concerned about Alphano, but I assured her that everything can be, uh, that can be done is being done. She agreed to continue with her own tasks for the time being on the condition that I contact her the moment there is any development. So that leaves four of us to attend the council. Arnvald is here to assist with security, incidentally, though the poor lad seems altogether too distracted for the task. Another one missing Alphano, I expect. Ah, but it's almost time. As soon as you're ready, present yourself to the gate to the guardsmen at the palace entrance. I shan't be far behind. Well, let's go ahead and get into that meeting. Ah, the scions of the seventh dawn. Welcome to Alamigo. The alliance leaders have already arrived. May I show you to the meeting chamber? And we'll have several cutscenes. So, let's enter the royal palace. Mistress Lise, Commander Aldin, it gives me great pleasure to formally welcome the city-state of Alamigo to the Eorzean Alliance. The pleasure is ours, Your Grace. I know I speak for all Alamegans when I say that we are glad of this chance to stand with our comrades of the Alliance. And we, for our part, are glad indeed to be able to welcome friends both old and new. Lord Hien of Dorma, at your service. Pray, accept my heartfelt thanks for your generous invitation. Nay, tis we who must thank you for journeying so far. And would be remiss of me not to acknowledge the part the Scions of the Seventh Dawn have played in bringing all of us together. In times of great unrest, you and yours have been our constant companions, without whom we would not be here. With apologies to Lord Hien and Mistress Alize, it occurs to me that we have not gathered in this way since that fateful day in Uldar. The day I lost my arm and my freedom. As I lay in my cell, never did I dream that I would one day be given the chance to represent my homeland at this council. I would not even be alive had you not plucked me from the jaws of death you, Yugiri, and Alfino. Would that the lad could be with us. I too owe my presence here to Alfino. In so many ways. Until such time as he returns, I mean to carry on his good work as best I can. Come, friends. Let us leave the past in the past and turn our eyes to the future. My Lord Hian, pray tell us how things stand in the East. Having heard the rumors of dissent in Garlemald, I dared to dream of a peaceable solution. Hmm. The Empire will not so easily change its ways. If the Garleans have a mind to take back Doma and Alamigo, we'll be hard-pressed to stop them, even with the might of Six Nations. But while we lack the strength to fight the tide, a course may yet present itself, if we read the winds aright. The winds suggest but one course to me. One which leads from the sea unto the river and thence to the source of all our woes. The Asians. Indeed. All here have felt their blighted touch. It was the bringers of chaos who nurtured the Archbishop's tyrannical ambitions. They who bestowed upon him the secrets of summoning as they have so many others before and since. 
And while they remain, we shall know no peace. Our objective is clear. The question is how to achieve it. That our enemy parades about in Xenos's skin poses problems in itself, but ere we get to them, how are we to infiltrate the Empire and get close enough to strike? While I see the wisdom in targeting the Essians, an assassination attempt on Garlean soil would do little to aid our cause, even were it to succeed. It's time we used our enemy's preferred tactic, subterfuge. You have an idea? Speak your mind, Master Thancred. None here know the enemy better than the Scions, and you may have best of all. Whatever it is you propose, we will give it fair hearing. On that you have my word. Very well, Admiral. My proposal is thus. We dispatch the Shinobi to Imperial territory. There, they sow the rumor that the Crown Prince perished in the battle for Alamigo, and that the man parading around is in fact a corpse inhabited by a servant of darkness. Well, it does have the ring of truth about it. And were the Gallians to learn that their future ruler is a puppet, the Empire would be shaken to the core. But, at the risk of sounding stupid, would they actually believe such an unlikely story? I didn't. Ordinarily not. But prior to his miraculous recovery, rumors of Xenos's death had already begun to circulate around the Empire. Ultimately, however, what the masses believe is not our chief concern. Our true objective is to create an opening for rival factions within Garlemald to exploit. Just as a war of succession erupted in the wake of Empress Solus's death. A war which raged until but recently, plunging the Imperial House into disarray as nephew and uncle grappled for the throne. It is no coincidence that one of Varus's first acts as Emperor was to name Xenos heir apparent, family feuds being so tiresome when armies are involved. Not all welcomed his choice of successor, however. There is no shortage of individuals who aspire to the throne, who would jump at any chance to seize power. The news that Xenos is not only dead, but a puppet to diabolical forces, would be too enticing to ignore. The Empire would not be quick to recover from a second war of succession. I am no stranger to infiltrating Imperial territory. With a team of operatives gathered from among the Alliance's finest, the plan should have a reasonable chance of success. Dorma already has Shinobi in place throughout the provinces. We stand ready to act, and act we must. What say you all? I'm for Master Thancri's proposal. We shine a light upon the Asian and test the Empire's unity. Twas his plot that scuttled Doma's negotiations, was it not? Why then, if we can eliminate him, there may yet be a chance for peace. Let us wage this war of subterfuge that we may one day lay down our arms. Gods know we never will while the Asians remain. This is not the Echo. History must be changed. Who is this? Ahead looms a calamity. Ahead looms light, expunging all form and life. Twin dooms only you can forestall. Only you. What's the matter? There's... there's a voice! 
spies in our midst? Nay, I sense no such presence. Let expanse contract. Eon become instant. Through wide the gates that we may pass. Is it over? Master Thancred! Twelve for Fend. Bear him to a private chamber. Have every healer make ready. Swiftly! Master Thancred remains in slumber. Though his vital signs appear stable, he's unresponsive. What could have done this? And, and why just him and not the others? I'm afraid we could not identify the cause, my lady. Our examinations revealed no wounds, nor the presence of any poisonous substances. Gods, that only makes it worse. You're to let us know the moment there's any change, all right? Thank you for coming. Knowing Thancred, he would apologize for being otherwise engaged at so crucial a juncture. In gifting us a course of action, Thancred sowed the seed of all that is to follow. We have but to nurture it as best we can. To him, I would say, rest easy, that he may wake to enjoy the fruits of our labors. Now, the matter of the mysterious voice must not be forgotten. Will you tell me exactly what happened? Alizé and I heard a voice in the moments before Thancred collapsed. It was accompanied by a severe headache, as if something were clutching at our minds. Did you experience the same thing? So, in between the voice and the pain, you felt as if you were somewhere else entirely? Your testimony confirms my suspicion. That which you experienced was, I believe, your soul being plucked from your flesh. Called. Called? I myself examined Thancred. Reach out as I may. I could not sense in him the spark of life that is his soul. That Thancred alone was stricken so is likely due to his heightened sensitivity to the effects of ether, a consequence of his prior possession by the Asian, the Hebrea. The owner of the voice, whoever it may be, reached out to you called your souls, and in so doing, caused you and yours such pain. But if that's true, where exactly are we being called to? I know not. Yet one thing is plain. Whoever waits for you on the other side is possessed of a power unlike any I have ever known. Forgive us, Lys. But may we leave Thancred in your care for a time? As if you had to ask. I may not be a scion anymore, but I'm no less a friend. Don't worry. I'll see to it that Thancred's well looked after. Just focus on solving this mystery, all right? Thank you, Lys. As the Elder Seedseer says, tis no ordinary individual we are dealing with. Nor can we discount the possibility of Asian involvement. Whoever or whatever is behind this, the sooner we find out, the better. Ah. <sighs>
just as we solve one problem, another new one props up. Poor Thancred can't catch a break. Never have I encountered such a phenomenon. If this is magic, it is beyond my ken. Don't worry about Thancred. I'll send word as soon as there's any change. If the Asians are indeed responsible, we must take steps to protect ourselves. Though, I know not how. Hmm. I just tried to call Rianji on his Lake Pearl. He didn't respond, but I dare to hope that he possesses some knowledge we do not. Ah, Rianji! Something's happening. Something happened during the meeting. Thancred's collapsed. A disembodied voice suddenly started. What? But that's. We should talk about this in person. All right, we'll meet you there. That was Rianje. He heard the voice too. In Thanalan? Hmm. Huh. As we alone were affected, afflicted at the meeting, I had my suspicions. But if the voice also spoke to Rianje, there can be little doubt. The Scions were targeted specifically. By whom and to what end is the question? One to which we must find an answer with all possible haste. Yeah. We learned the emote Endure. What does this emote look like? You silently endure. Oh, it just makes you make a mean face. I shall be interested to hear how Arianje's experience compares to our own. Well, let's go find out. Arianje agreed to meet with us at the Rising Stones. If any of the others heard the voice, we'll soon find out. Good luck. I should get back to the meeting with the Elder Seed Seer, but if there's anything I can do, anything at all, you must let me know, alright? Promise me. Right, let's be on our way. Good to see you. Would that our meeting were under happier circumstances. I judged the voice sufficient cause for concern even before you sent word of its effect on our comrade. You heard it too, then? Aye. And all but certainly at the selfsame instant. Alas, pained as I was, I could make little sense of what few words did then reach mine ears. Who do you think is responsible? Could this be the Asians doing? That I cannot say. Not when so little is known. Ere I indulge in speculation, I would examine Thancred with mine own eyes. To Alamigo, then, without further delay. One other thing. During my visit to the Far East, I observed a strange phenomenon. Thou referrest, I presume, to the localized reduction in etheric density. Well, that spares me the trouble of an explanation. Yes, I noted precisely that at two apparently unconnected locations. I take it the phenomenon is not limited to the Far East. Indeed not. Of late, our agents charged with surveilling the beast tribes have spoken of little else. In every corner of the realm, they tell of places in which the ether hath grown thin. Naturally, my suspicions first turned to primal activity, but the areas thus affected betray no evidence of summoning. I must confess to being quite perplexed. If the same phenomenon is being observed in multiple locations on opposite sides of the world, we may safely discount regional factors. 
Needless to say, this warrants further investigation. Indeed. I shall make it my task to... The voice... It calleth to me once more. I hear it too. Only you. Only you. Uh, no! Ishtola! Real Jay! Throw wide the gates. Yishtola, Arianger, open your eyes! Open your eyes, I beg you! Say something! Anything! Not again. Please, not again! Well, that's not good. That's not good at all, as a matter of fact. This is an unprecedented predicament for the Scions. We must remain strong. The least of us, most of all. It cannot be discounted that Mistress Kryal has heard the voice as well. I will ask Tataru to send, word, uh, send her word of what has come to pass. Well, let's talk to the others real quick. Confound these old bones. Useless as I am, I should have been the one to be struck down. Ogre, sister, and I will have tur well, take turns to keep watch over the slumbering Archons. We'll not leave them unattended for even a moment. Oh, that's good. Real? Didn't the self-same thing happen to Thancred? Who's bloody next? We had spoken earnestly of doing more to ease the senior Scion's burdens. But not under these circumstances, nor less so soon. I only hope I'll be equal to the challenge. I have no doubt that you will, but that still doesn't... change that this is bad. As a mage, I have some few scholarly acquaintances of my own, and will reach out to them for their insights. It may not be much, but it is my own little way of aiding Mistress Alice. Oh, Alice. What are we going to do? Forgive me, that was an unseemly display. It happened before your very eyes, my lady. None here would have behaved any differently. We have borne the two of them to a private chamber. But tell me, is it true that Master Thancred languishes, languishes in a state like Ala, uh, in a like state in Alamigo? I'm afraid so. Though even given the circumstances, it would seem best to observe them together. I will send word to Lise that he should be brought here. Take heart, my lady. The world is full of scholars and knowledgeable folk of every persuasion. Someone out there is bound to know what ails our comrades and how it might be cured. Thus we will rouse them, no matter what. That we will, Hori. That we will. But first things first, our comrades will have questions. May I ask that you explain the situation to them? I must attend to a private matter. You're a good man, Hori. Oh, I promised I'd visit someone in Limsa Laminza. He's been waiting at Maelstrom Command for a while now. You know, you should come alone too. I think he'd be glad to see you. 
Uh, we all know who that is. Oh dear. Let's go see an old friend. A little kobold, as a matter of fact. With Mr. Sally, say are you? She usually visits alone. Still, it'd make a welcome change for the little one. As you probably guessed, it's Gabu we've come to see. The private here will bring him out to us. Ever since the Maelstrom took him in, I've tried to visit as often as I can. And after what beheld our friends, I was taken by the urge to visit again. It's difficult to explain. No, I think I get it. You get the feeling. It might be the last time in a while. Here he is, my lady. Gabu, it's been too long. I'm afraid there's been no change. If he can see or hear us, he has given no sign. I see. You're still fighting. I'm proud of you. We promised that we would come and visit you together, didn't we? Alphano and I. I'm sorry that we haven't managed that yet. You know, with the three of us like this, does it not remind you of that night? Of the stars beyond count twinkling in the heavens? I was feeling pretty low back then. Powerless. But I knew that my brother was close by if I needed him, and that the others would be waiting for me back at the Rising Stones. Not like now. I've seen my share of trouble since coming to Eorzea. Been reminded again and again of my limitations. Of how little I can change about this world. And I've come to know the sorrow of parting all too well. But to have the people I hold dear struck down before my eyes and be powerless to help them, that, that I cannot bear. You don't have to bear this burden alone. No, I don't. You're right. It's pure arrogance to imagine I can solve everything by myself. You'd think I'd have learned that by now. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. Well, that's more than enough brooding for one day. Come on. We have friends to save. Yes, we do. Let's return to the Rising Stones and take it from there. Thanks again for agreeing to come. It meant a lot to me. Let's go back. I did some thinking on the way back, and I think Hori is right. We need to seek outside help. Ordinarily, we would turn to our own experts in such matters, but they're both among the stricken. 
I will begin by reaching out to my myriad guilds and to the myriad guilds and research institutions here in Eorzea. Additionally, Grandfather and Minfilia had a wealth of connections between them, and I mean to explore those avenues too. We'll find a way to save everyone, mark my words. Much and more has happened in recent days, some of it for the good, some not so. But all around me, people continue their fight. From the Shinobi, who search for Alphano, to the Alliance members who make ready to move against the Empire, they march in on the face of great adversity, bearing heavy burdens. Everyone is playing their part, and so must I. You have your own part to play, I know, and it's bigger than most, so I won't keep you. Just promise that you'll visit from time to time, and I promise I'll have good tidings to share with you when you do. Popularis no longer present an obstacle. Now is the time to bring the Empire's might to bear. A word from your radiance is all it takes. But one word, and the Imperial Army will fall upon Alamigo as a pack of bloodthirsty wolves and tear that feeble nation apart. Despite the lengths I go to, an emissary playing the part of a fool. When first I took this face, I swore to use all of my knowledge, all of my power, to further the cause of the Empire. My deeds stand testament to my commitment. And with this adamant flesh at my disposal, I could destroy the Icon Slayer as easily as one might swat a fly. Why do you hesitate? <sighs> Our enemy is resourceful. Though victory is certain now, it will not remain so indefinitely. Deliberate if you must, but be quick about it. We'll speak again when you have unburdened yourself of doubt. Until then, I take my leave. Father. the one to sigh. I played my part to perfection. I had earned my rest, and then, thanks to La Habrea's crowning act of idiocy, our favorite emissary sees fit to summon me back. Elidibus was ever a warrior. A most tiresome trait, would you not agree? What? Have you no words for me either? No matter. I've long grown weary of this mummery. Now, my dearest grandson, let me remind you of your place in the simplest of terms. You do not make judgments, you administer them. Swiftly and to the letter. Naught else is your concern. 
Elidibus may be an insufferable bore, but he is no fool. His choices as emissary seldom err. If aught threatens the balance twixt light and dark, it falls to you to remove it. Be it by your own hands or by your armies, you have ample means at your disposal. That is why this empire exists, why I built it. Oh dear, have I touched a nerve? You always were an easy one to read. I pity you, I do. As they say, ignorance is bliss. And I know how much happier you would be not knowing the things you know. The Founding Father was an Assian. And he created the Empire solely for the purpose of sowing the seeds of chaos. Don't take it personally. I merely do my duty. To bring about a calamity requires no small amount of power. And there is no surer way to obtain such power than by collecting powerful pawns. To that end, I have labored long and hard, and I must say I am quite pleased with my handiwork. Paltry, though it seems, in comparison to Alec. are over fond of your own voices. Mark me, Asian. Man is the master of his own destiny. <sighs> Such a waste of time and energy. Both yours and mine. Lest you forget you are Emperor now. If you wish to spout drivel about man's destiny, save it for the masses. It will serve to give them a sense of purpose and you pliant pieces for the game. Oh, do stop sulking, boy. You, of all people, should understand. Ours is a struggle to restore both mankind and the world to their rightful state. Viewed thus, our goals are one and the same. What in the world?
dead. All dead. Yet I see no wounds, nor any evidence of battle. Damn them. They finally used it. The Empire developed an alchemical weapon in Girabanya. A gas. Black Rose, it was called. And to breathe it is to breathe your last. And we did a quest about that way early on in the beginning of Stormblood. And that did this? I thought the project abandoned and its vile fruit destroyed, but no one else could have wrought such an atrocity. Fools. What hope do they gain with this butchery? Can they not see that a rule won through terror will not endure? How many more provinces must they lose? Nay, wait. This is not the work of men, but monsters. The Asians. It cannot be a coincidence that their trail led us here. Their objective was never to rule, but sow strife and discord. Such a crime does indeed bear the mark of the bringers of chaos. Black Rose cannot be allowed to kill again. We must find the Asians and put an end to their plot. Well, that was quite the exposition dump. From Solus Zus Galvis still being alive, and apparently an Asian, even at the beginning of the Empire, to Black Rose being used, to Adlitibus being the one in Xenos' body. That's a lot to digest. And we're going to move on with the main story quest again in the next episode. Um, if my predictions are correct and if I've measured the lengths of the quests accurately, it's going to be one or two more episodes. Um, I will likely release those other two episodes if there are two on the same day to finish up Stormblood. And after that, well, I'm going to have to leave you for a little while until Shadowbringers is ready for us to record. I mean, Shadowbringers is out at the time of recording, don't get me wrong. But it will take me some time to prepare. So, in the next episode, presumably the finale to Stormblood. I'm Foxy Games, and I shall see you next time. Bye.